The Power of the Dog director, Jane Campion, said that she fears Netflix might take fewer risks on their original content in the future. We know the New Zealand filmmaker for winning two Academy Awards, one for her 1994 drama, The Piano, and the other more recently for her Netflix film, The Power of the Dog. In this video, let's take a look at what we know about her claim regarding this. First off, Jane Campion fears Netflix will stop taking risks on films. Apparently, Campion thinks the streaming service won't be taking risks with its content in the future. This is most probably because of the layoffs that occurred amid recent bad news for Netflix. There were reports that Netflix, for the first time, saw its total subscriber count decrease in the first quarter of this year. In fact, Netflix expects to lose over 2 million subscribers by the end of the second quarter as well. Because of the decrease, it fired about 300 of its employees. And so, Campion is concerned they may do even more to cut costs. In an interview with the BBC, she said that she thinks they're going to be pickier about other projects. Still, she believes that the cost cutting will probably not affect established filmmakers. She added she doesn't think it would be hard for her if she wanted to do something, because she has established a relationship with the network, and they're incredibly loyal. Indeed, according to her, The Power of the Dog couldn't have been made without Netflix. Because of the medium-sized budget and the small scale of the story, she said that the only people that would go near her project was Netflix. But with the streamer's new financial troubles, things might be changing. Next up, what does Jane think will happen to Netflix in the future? According to her, this could come as a blow to the film industry, as streaming platforms are the last supporter of medium-budget filmmaking. In the past two decades, and perhaps even longer, Hollywood has been moving largely towards a blockbuster-only strategy. Because of the rise of the internet and streaming platforms, theater attendance has become harder and harder to secure, which means only large-budget films or films based on existing properties perform adequately at the box office. For most of these studios, medium-budget films have become a thing of the past. As a result, streaming platforms have moved in to fill a small portion of this void. Netflix, for example, has now become a significant player for big projects from major directors. Because of the major studio's vacancies in the medium budget realm. Streaming platforms also have a larger and larger presence at the Academy Awards every year. Last year was a perfect example of this. The Best Picture Award was a battle between Apple TV Plus's CODA and Netflix The Power of the Dog, clearly showing how important streaming has become. Let's talk about how well The Power of the Dog did on Netflix. Since it was Campion's first feature film as a director in 12 years, The Power of the Dog had plenty to wag its tail about in the first five Five days after its debut on Netflix. Samba TV reported that after its worldwide release on the streaming service on December 1st, 1.2 million US households watched it over the following week. That was actually an amazing start for what's essentially a two hour and six minute art house movie. Plus, these stats showed it did better than HBO Max's first weekend of King Richard by 70%. Also, this was even higher than the first weekend of HBO Max's Sopranos prequel feature, The Many Saints of of Newark, which drew 1 million stateside homes in its first three days of release. What's even more interesting is that The Power of the Dog is 300,000 US households shy of the five-day premiere figure for Disney Plus's first episode of Hawkeye. The show drew 1.5 million viewers when it first aired, but obviously, since we're talking about Netflix, that comparison isn't necessary. Netflix has a much bigger digital footprint than other streaming services, such as Disney Plus and HBO Max in the US and Canada. Samba TV even measured that 3 million U.S. smart TV households had tuned into a series or a movie for approximately five minutes on Netflix. Moving on, what are the effects of Netflix downsizing its animation department? Just last month, another round of layoffs at Netflix, unfortunately, affected 30 Netflix animation employees. Deadline first reported the news, and the streaming service confirmed to TechCrunch that the company was downsizing the department. Earlier this year, the streaming giant brought on Karen Tolliver as vice president of animation film content, and Tracy Balthazar as vice president of animation film production. The company said that similar to other major animation film studios, the idea was to downsize so the animation film production arm is better organized under a central leader like Balthazar. Apparently, Netflix hopes that with a reduced staff, the animation team can make even more high-quality films. The streaming service has had many Academy Award-nominated animated titles in the past, such as Claws, The Mitchells vs. The Machines, I Lost My Body, and Over the Moon. Over the summer, it laid off over 450 employees in a major workforce reduction. This was primarily due to slow revenue growth. In May 2022, TechCrunch learned that changes to animated projects 
could impact around 70 employees in the animation division. So there has been bad news all around for Netflix, as the streaming service lost 970,000 subscribers in July, adding to the loss of 200,000 subs in April. What Jane Campion said about Netflix not taking risks makes a lot more sense now. And for some other related news. First off, Netflix ad-supported plan will launch on November 3rd. Netflix has proclaimed the release of its new ad-supported plan called Basic with Ads. It'll be launching on the 3rd of November in several countries, including the US, for just $6.99 per month. Other countries included in the list are Canada, Mexico, the UK, France, Germany, Italy, Australia, Japan, Korea, and Brazil. Spain will also be able to access the plan a few days later, on the 10th of November. Netflix is successfully competing with its rival Disney Plus by one month, which is also launching its ad-supported plan for $7.99 per month on the 8th of December. The announcement showed its intentions to expand the ad-supported plan to more countries in the future, but it has yet to work out the rights to shows and movies for the plan. According to Chief Operating Officer at Netflix, Greg Peters, approximately 5-10% to of the catalog might not be available to users who choose to switch to the new plan, but the plan will stream videos at 720p HD instead of 1080p HD, along with no option for 4K viewing. We expect ads to be 15-30 to 30 seconds long, playing before and during the show or movie while new movies will get pre-rolled ads and no interruptions. The average limited ad loan would probably be four to five minutes of ads per hour. Next up, Netflix reveals the trailer for The Bastard, Son, and The Devil Himself. If you're looking for your monthly dose of sarcasm, fantasy, and gore, look no further. Netflix has dropped a trailer for their upcoming fantasy series, The Bastard, Son, and The Devil Himself, and we gotta say, it looks awesome. Based on Sally Green's YA trilogy, Half Bad, it follows 16-year-old kid Nathan, who's the son of the world's most dangerous wizard. And with his 17th birthday approaching, Nathan's powers are coming in hot, something that both he and those around him are continuously anxious about. As we wait for the series, we can't help but wonder whether he'll continue his father's terrible path or not. The line between good and evil is broken as tension rises, and Nathan discovers his true identity during the story. The series was created and written by Joe Barton, who's best known for his BBC Two and Netflix crime thriller called Jiri Haji. Fans of HBO Max's Titans will recognize Jaylai Kurgo, who plays Nathan, from his current run on the series as Tim Drake. It also stars Isabel Jasper Jones, Karen Connell, Paul Reddy, Carrie Fox, Fahinti Belogan, and more. And we're excited to see how the show turns out. Lastly, Netflix unveils the first look at The Crown Season 5. The first look photos of the famous Netflix series The Crown Season 5 are here, and the royal family is now now in 90s Britain. Based on historical events, the season will dramatize the story of Queen Elizabeth II and the political and personal events that have helped shape her reign. With the new decade in its stride, it'll present the royal family with possibly their biggest challenge to date as the public openly questions her role in 90s Britain. One of the images shows Imelda Staunton, who'll be leading season 5 as Queen Elizabeth II. Meanwhile, Elizabeth Debicki and Dominic West will suit up to play Princess Diana and Prince Charles respectively. With the passing of the Queen in real life, fans are especially looking forward to seeing how the show pans out, even though that has nothing to do with the storyline. And that's a wrap for this video. What do you think of Jane Campion saying she fears Netflix will stop taking risks on movies? Do you think this could be true? Let us know in the comments down below. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.